And part two of looking back at the past. And uh, since I started making this video, just the other day, yesterday, I guess, I came across this guy talking about, you know, too many people live in the past and the past has to be forgotten. You got to be living in the here and now, the today, and look forward to the future. That's what you're going to be doing. Forget about the past. And yet there are sayings, and I don't have the exact words, that if we don't remember the past, we're going to keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And uh, that's my exact belief, that we learn from the past. And uh, the big report came out of UN about extinction. We're in the middle of a huge extinction. Have you heard about this? There are species threatened and dying because of us human beings. And to be honest, I believe it. It's, it's happening. Yes, there's overfishing. We're changing agriculture. We're spraying poisons all over things. But the fact about extinctions that nobody is mentioning, especially in the media, is that we have always had extinctions. The planet's life diversity was way more than what it is today. We had creatures that even our wildest imaginations can't picture. You know, the dinosaur age. And not only huge di I mean, do you know how big they were compared to what we got today? And they were big on land, big in the water, mega sharks, and all kinds of things. And in the air, flying around. And they went extinct for one reason or another. And not just because of this big meteor that hit the earth. Extinction is always taking place as the planet has evolved. And the biggest thing about extinction right now is that it's always the largest species that are dying off and no help coming from humans. I mean, Cindy and I traveled around the United States and in South Dakota we came across the mammoth site and it's a it's a great dig they're digging up fossilized bones and stuff like that of mammoth and big bears that used to inhabit north america and all kinds of animals there were even a time when they had uh camels and stuff like that they're gone not because of over hunting and you know human interference it's extinction the earth climate change the everything you know it just keeps evolving so all they're trying to do is scare the by Jesus out of people for their own purposes at least that's the way I see it same thing with this climate change monkey BS climate change global warming man-made you know before man came along there was never a climate change the earth climate was always so steady so predictable just a constant Except for those times when we had Ice Age and then we had the Ice Age melting and another Ice Age and a mini Ice Age and all these different things. Aside of that, the Earth climate was very constant. Well, you know, wake up. Anyway, it's time to take a step back to a different time, a different place. And yet, it's available to us old people in our memories and th this is where it comes in that i say that you know there's a whole generation that's going to go extinct and the young people will not know what it was like they will see images on tv of the past probably they'll be portrayed as bad oh yes they were uh, uprisings for uh, racial equality and women didn't have equality and uh, there was Vietnam War. Oh, man, the brutality and every You know, they can talk about all this stuff, but the fact of the matter is... But in my opinion, things were better back then. And maybe that's just an old guy talking, but in... The things I base it on is that there was a lot of hope back in the 60s and 70s. Even if you go back to the 50s, it was a hope of moving forward, forward for a better future for everybody everybody i mean the big marches in the streets you know university students out by the gazillions fighting and protesting war kent state and all the different things music moving forward opening up new avenues and having a concert like woodstock you know take a look at the biggest entertainers at that time musician wise 
They didn't have the fancy electronic uh, equipment, but they sure the hell weren't lip singing either. It was good, pure, raw music. Automobiles. They didn't have self driving mode and uh, all the tech that today, you know, I mean, it, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, anti locking brakes, you know, I mean, they still had cars that didn't have power steering for Pete's sakes. But they were cars that were different. The other day I heard a reporter talking about how awesome it is now that you can buy a car without leaving your house. You know, basically you can just glue your butt to the couch and you can do everything. You know, you can buy a car. You can. O you don't even have to order the food, man. Your fridge, you got a smart fridge with a see-through door and connect it to the internet. It knows when you're running low on stuff. It'll order and the delivery pil person will come and come into your house, replenish everything. You got your smart devices. I mean, geez, you know, in the I've talked about this in, in a joking way that back in the early 70s, I was my dad's remote control. He'd want to change a channel. He'd tell me I'd go there and it wasn't pressing buttons on a TV. It was turning a dial, you know, channel 2, channel 3, 4, 5, just turn that dial. Then we got remote controls and thought, how cool it is, you know, I don't even have to go to the TV to turn it on and turn it off and change channels and do whatever. And, you know, now I got a gazillion channels available with cable and I got a gazillion channels showing the same thing. There's nothing to see. The shows are crap. Well, now, you know, you got Alexa. And you, Alexa, turn the lights on. Alexa, turn the TV. No, no, I want music on. Alexa, can you? And Alexa is keeping a track of you. Isn't that just awesome? We got all this stuff. And you, can, can anyone honestly say that things are going to be better for the next generation than what we had back then? We had hope. And we had simple things. And we were satisfied with it. I say that we were simply living and living simply. Think about it. Simply living and living simply. We were living simply and happy with it. We weren't expecting everything and whatever, and but we were living. It was a life. Holy smokes. You could do whatever. So anyway, back in the 70s, I got my driver's license, living in Merritt, British Columbia, had a new car, and up on the bench there was a drive-in theater that would start uh, having shows in well, probably May, I guess, May long week and something like that. And it would carry on until the fall, pretty well on the weekends. Uh, a lot of people would go to the drive-in, and you got this big, humongous screen. It's plywood, all put up on a big stand and painted white. You had a projector sh showing the show onto that screen. Not top quality in any sense of the word. You, know, you arrive at night, you drive in, it's dusty. Because Merritt was very warm and didn't get much rain. It'd be very dusty in there from all the cars having packed down any grass that was ever growing in there. And you'd pull up to one of these metal stands that had a little speaker. And you'd hang it on your car and, and the speaker sound was crappier and, you know, scratchy and stuff. Sometimes you might even have to move to a different speaker. It was crappy, but boy, we were satisfied. It was fun. It was a night out and simply living, living simply. Think of it. What an awesome experience we had. Windows are down. The air is warm. Mosquitoes are coming by the swarm, eating you. Uh, those fond memories, man. Fond memories of a day gone by. Today, you think young people would want to put up with crappy broadcast, you know, projections on a wooden thing and speaker? It's not even stereo and Dolby, man. I mean, I can't listen to that. I need the purity, the purity of sound. It's going to be all created with, oh, oh, all those, m yeah, right. Woodstock, the best musicians in the world on stage 
was, wasn't electronic. It wasn't lip singing. They gave you pure sound. It was simple. Simple living. Living simply. All around us, it became the trend. It was what we were used to, what we were having, until, you know, we were shown that there's a different way. Greed is good. You gotta have more. And we can change the world. We can create a new reality. Well, that new reality really sucks, in my opinion. I'm gonna go back to the 70s in Merit, and I was talking about driving theaters. Relationships. In the 70s, I met my first wife in Merritt. And uh, quite a story with that. Um, I just got my new car and uh, I had a lady friend, so I decided I was going to go pick her up and take her just for a little drive up to Courtney Lake. Uh, it was a beautiful, warm, uh, early, well, late summer, early fall weather. Uh, very warm, sunny, and Courtney Lake was not far away, 15, 16 kilometers, I don't know, at the most. And uh, the car was still new, so I was breaking it in, and it always said, you know, after driving it, uh, park it for a little bit, let it cool off, and all that stuff. So anyway, I went to pick her up, and she had a friend visiting her, or more like an acquaintance. I don't know how they met or whatever. But she had an acquaintance visiting her from Vancouver. And uh, I didn't know about this. So anyway, that we all piled into the car and I'm driving and her friend's in the back seat and I'm looking at her in my mirror and thinking, wow, is she ever beautiful? Holy smokes. So we get up to uh, Courtney Lake and think about this. Relationships. Today, it's so hard in many instances to form. Back in the 60s, 70s, it was just a rite of passage. So we get up to the lake and park by one of the picnic benches. The lady friend goes off looking around down to the lake. and stuff. beautiful scenery, absolutely beautiful in the day. And her friend and I, and I'll refer to her as H., we sit on a picnic table, and I mean on it, not on the sitting part, but on the top of the table, not because we're arrogant, but because the sitting part was quite dirty. I mean, people had, it looked like maybe ketchup or whatever, but it was, it was dirty, so we sat on top of it. And we did something so unique in today's world that there were these two people facing each other, talking communicating and boy did we talk and communicate about everything all the significant insignificancies if you can get what I'm getting at is that everything was of important but nothing really I, it, it was just talking communicating we talked about the universe for Pete's sakes what is our position about life in space and Carl Sagan that all this life's out there and what about religion and all these different... We talked and communicated nonstop. And I tell you, at that time, my heart was just... It, it was like I had met a soulmate. You cannot imagine if you've never experienced it. It was like I was connected to that person on an in, inner level, deep. Not just seeing physical part, but on a level that you can't imagine so we're sitting there talking talking connecting more getting closer more i mean we've just met for the first time and it was so intense i mean it was exciting I'm, I'm a guy and i'm telling you that's how i felt it wasn't about being cool and you know standoffish and oh yeah you know i'm the fawns and uh-huh uh -huh. no it was j just the excitement and thrill was beyond description so anyway, it was time to leave, and we're heading down, and I am keep looking at her in the rearview mirror. She's in the back seat of the car, and I'm thinking, I might never see her again. I might never see her. What can I do? Well, she's still going to be here for a little bit. I'll ask her to the theater. And, you know, all these things race through your mind. I'm not thinking about, like today, you know, get out a smartphone and text something. No, no, it was talking. So anyway... I asked her if she'd go to a show with me. 
And surprise of surprises, she said yes. <gasps> oh, man, rejoice, happy, feeling. Oh, you can't describe it. Again, I'm talking about this because you have to realize in today's world already, they have been unbelievable experiments with humanity, like in China, the one-child policy that created parents who aborted baby girls to have a boy because a boy is more capable of looking after families as when the parents get old, which has created a glut of males who now cannot f have a relationship. There's no women around. There's no females. And it's not just in China. It's happened in other places. All these social experiments have screwed up the real uh, human way you know the way that it was supposed to be you get these people the experts coming in and think that they can change on nature and humanity by waving their magic wand and it's just going to be all awesome we don't have to think about long-term consequences so like i said you know and in today you hear about uh well in some instances this was in the last week in some businesses in the states they don't even want people to shake hands you got to stay awake, aw away from your co-workers, everyone like that, because you might offend. There's, you could say the wrong thing, and oh my God, you know what trouble that would create for a company with all the internal and all. Oh man, you just, just get in your cubicle, do your work. Better yet, get in the gig economy, stay at home, work. You're self-employed, but you're working for nobody, and you're working more hours than ever just to make ends meet you don't have time and energy to form a relationship or a bond that's why i'm talking about this because it w this is in one generation man and yes there are still people today who live and have relationships and stuff but it's dwindling it's dwindling and it's only going to get worse in my opinion so Anyway, I picked her up to go to the show and uh, Merritt's crappy little theater again that wasn't Dolby and stereo and THX sound and all this sort of stuff. It was just a crappy old 70s theater broadcasting on a screen again. Uh, questionable. It, it was great. I mean, we didn't know anything different. We had nothing to compare it to. It was awesome. So we're at the theater to get our tickets and she's standing in front of me wearing her jeans long hair down her back and she's got a little jacket on. i can still see it i lived it and i'm thinking wow she's the most beautiful girl in the world and she decided to go out with me i asked and she did and w th this is incredible i i've got to be the luckiest person we went to the show make a long story short and how things can develop out of nowhere in less than three weeks from the time we met, we were married. How's that for something? In less than three weeks from the time we met, we were married. My parents and her parents didn't even... My parents hadn't met her and her parents hadn't met me. They lived in Merritt. They haven't met us. Or, you know what I'm saying. After we got married, we went to my parents' house and I introduced my wife to my parents there was no wedding it was uh, eloping eloping we just at the spur of the moment we went down to the courthouse and with uh, people that i knew who stood up for us we got married wow it was love i tell you it was love more intense than you can imagine it was a kind of love that i couldn't even put into words so there we are I introduced her to my parents, and my parents were very, uh, well, they were happy, happy for us. They welcomed her. Uh, it was just like it should be. We went and met her, or I went and met her parents, and the same thing. And suddenly, you know, it, it was just, we became a family. It was great. In less than three weeks, we were married. In a couple of years, we had our first child. In four years, we were heading for divorce. And because of me. It shows that even the deepest love, even the deepest feelings uh, that seem supernatural, coming out of 
unbelievable spaces can be screwed up by human action. You know, not greed, I guess. You know, it, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Cheating, all these things. It, it just crazy. But I tell you, the years we had, it, it many ways the best of times and in a few ways it was the worst of times but it's part of what made me who I am and part of what makes me question so much of the past and have so many regrets I can't do do-overs that doesn't exist but I can learn from the past I, I don't know what the young people who are devoted to their smartphones and texting will learn from the, their past it's and I'm not knocking them down and putting you know oh well you know this next generation because we've seen that happen in our lives you know back in the 60s my dad thought that the generation you know with the long hair the hippies and all oh, this was just the craziest and the uh, world's gonna come to an end these people have you know, just no values, ethics, morals, and we survived. So, but the thing is, is that today, it's not an individual choice that's leading people into this new reality, but it seems like it's a concentrated effort. It seems like it's a planned thing taking place, you know, dare I say, new world order and how things are being planned just a different time anyway that's an old man going down the path of you know times gone by and history and just the beginning of life man you know that was that for me that was just the beginning of life and the experiences continued on and in many ways I also became uh, well struck with greed 80s you know became the decade of greed you had to have fancier stuff you, you couldn't be happy you couldn't be satisfied you know if you had a BMW you had to have a Porsche or an uh, in the 80s I had a Jaguar you know 12 cylinder Jaguar because well I had a Trans Am but you know Trans Am I needed a 12 cylinder Jaguar it was just crazy time crazy times and uh, now I look back and I say, boy, you know, I miss those simple times, simple living and living simply. That was the best. <laughs>